where you are. And I'm truly grateful and humbled. So many people are actually struggling. Right now, as we are speaking, they are actually struggling in this life. My beloved, this message will change your life completely. The way you, oh God, I'm, I'm, I'm already excited. So please allow me to lay a foundation and from there we will take off and we will take off. <laughs> so a, lo a lot of people are actually struggling right now as we are talking um, uh, based because of the lack of knowledge. Because the Bible says my people, they, they perish because they lack knowledge. Not that they lack power, they lack, no, they lack knowledge. So I always say this, you know, the best thing that a man can ever do for you is to expose you to knowledge. That is the best thing that any person can ever do to you is to expose you to knowledge. So many people are struggling right now as we are speaking because they lack knowledge. But because of today, oh God help me, please allow me to teach. But because of today, through the word of God, your life ought to change. Your life ought to change. So we, we, we want to deal with um, the ministry of angels. <laughs> and you will see manifestation. Oh, glory to God. Prophetess, angel, Preston, it is good to see you. Uh, God bless you. So, but for us to understand angels and for us to understand their assignment and for us to understand their role, we have to go back to the basics to understand why they were created what for? What's the purpose? What's the role of them? So when we get to a place of understanding that first, when I get you to understand this truth, oh God, it'll be easy for you to understand what I'll say after. So for us to understand the ministry of angels, you have to understand how they were created. You have to understand why they were created and you have to understand their role, why they were created. So let's go back to where it all began. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse 1. Genesis 1, verse 1. Ah, oh, my God. And the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning. Remember, when God was creating in the beginning, when the Bible says in the beginning, when, when the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, it's a question that I want to pose to you. Where was he when he was creating the beginning? Yeah, just keep that in your somewhere put it somewhere and then we'll get back to that so he says in the beginning god created that means god was already there when he was creating the beginning okay you will get to understand it in a few minutes in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth right remember this god does not exist in time god does not exist in time because he is the beginning for you for you cannot be in the beginning to create the beginning Oh, God help me. You cannot be in the beginning to create the beginning. So God does not exist in time. Okay? You have to be out of the beginning to create the beginning. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. So meaning God existed before the beginning. So God operates with foreknowledge. Because when you look at Isaiah... When you look at Isaiah, look at Isaiah 6, 43, uh, Isaiah 46, actually. Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46. Please stay there. I'm just laying a foundation and we are about to take off. Today it is going to be, hmm, how can I explain it? Today is going to be Hati, Parosia, Doshalahanti, Mentrohoskia, Mentrohoskia. <laughs> Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46, verse number 10. The Bible says, declaring the end from the beginning. Remember, God existed before the, the beginning and he operates with foreknowledge. God operates with foreknowledge. So Isaiah 46.10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things not yet done. So he operates from the end to the beginning. Meaning when God created time, it was from the finished product. Let me give an example so that you stay with me. I don't want you to, 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 to miss out. So, for example, you, you get into the movie industry. Yeah? Then, for example, let, I'll give an example. Let's say you're, you're, you're watching Wakanda right now, right? Let's say it's, it's an example. 
I know people said, yeah, pastor was saying, go and watch Wakanda. I know people, you know, people who misinterpret, misquote you and... <laughs> so, oh God, help me. So when we're talking about Wakanda, let's say, example, you go and watch Wakanda. When you are watching Wakanda, you are watching the finished product. But there was a script that was already put in place before we could even watch the Wakanda. So that's how God operates. He operates outside of time. So everything that is happening, it, it, he, he, he uses foreknowledge. He had already seen it. So when we now watch Wakanda right now, we are thinking, wow, look at this movie. But the script was there already. So when God was creating the beginning, he was outside of the beginning. So he was creating from the end to the beginning, according to Isaiah, declaring things from the end to the beginning. So he's, it's like the script is there already, but then you now begin to see the manifestation, all right? So when, that means when God created time, it was from the finished product. When God created time, it was from the finished product. So I want you to understand this, right? So God is no longer mysterious. For he has given us a document with 66 books that carries the revelation of God. So because in the, you say, oh, he's a mysterious God, mysterious God. He is no longer mysterious. Why? Because he has given us a document that carries the revelation of himself, that carries the revelation of God. So now, remember, we're dealing with angels, the ministry of angels, but we have to look at the foundation, right? Now look at Genesis chapter 126. Genesis chapter 126. This is just laying the foundation. We're taking off in a, in a few minutes. Genesis 126. Genesis chapter 126. Then God said, let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and all over the earth and all over the creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Always remember this. When God said, let us now create men in our image, he was not talking about Adam. Okay? And that man is not Adam. Why? Why do I say? Okay, let, let, let me correct that as we go so that uh, I don't leave you hanging. When God said, let us create men in our own image, he was not talking about Adam. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 3. Hebrews 1, verse number 3. He is the, he is the radiance of the glory of the Father. The express image, meaning what? The exact imprint of his image. So when God said, let us create men in our image, he was talking about his son. Jesus. Why? Because he is the express image. That word image, he is the image, not Adam. Because we then see Adam being formed. There's a difference between creation and formation. Adam was formed, but Jesus was created. And look at verse 27 of the same book, Parosi Giyadosha, of, of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Look at verse 27. Look at verse 27. And, and God created men in his own image. Watch this. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. So the image that is being created is male and female. That is Christ. Why? Because the Bible then tells us that in Christ, there is no, there is no Jew, no Gentile, male or female. So the image that is being mentioned is not Adam, but it is Christ right this then will help you why am i saying all this this then will help you to further understand that in him he created male and female galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 galatians please stay with me galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 that's where you see the woman was taken out of adam because already the the prototype was already been made that in him there is no Jew, no Gentile, male or female. Okay? Je uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Praise God. I'm laying a foundation and we are taking off in a few minutes. Stay there. 
There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female. That's why when, when you are in Christ, there is no more male or female. Obvious, in the natural, you're still a, a woman, and in the natural, you're still a male. But before God, there is no male or female. So I have a problem with people that will say women are not allowed to preach. It is no longer the woman preaching because the Bible says, I was crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, not I, but Christ that lives in me. And in Christ, we are now in Christ, and in Christ there is no male or female. But you're still in the natural. Your structure, still woman. Structure, still man. But in Christ, where we are, in our true identity, there is no male or female. When God looks at you, he's seeing a spirit because we are spirit beings. Okay? So, in Christ, he is the express image of God. There is neither male or female, right? Go back to Genesis now. Go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. Genesis 2, verse number 7. Then the Lord God formed men. He formed men. Remember, the image was created. That's Jesus Christ. Then verse Genesis 2, 7. He then formed men out of the dust from the ground. And breathed in his nostrils and breathed of breath of life, the Zoe, God kind of. The man became a living creature. Remember, Paul then says again, if any man be in Christ, he's a new what? A new creature. So the man became a living creature, but that man is not the image of God. <laughs> okay? So let's now, because I wanted to lay that foundation. Right. So let's let's now look at when angels were created. We want to look at when angels were created and why were they created. So when you know this, when you know how something was created, you can then tell how it functions. Many of you, you talk about oh, angels, angels. But you don't know how they were created. You don't know why they were created. That's the reason why you don't know how they function. That's the reason why you are not a beneficiary of their assignment. All right? So you have to understand why they were created, when they were created, and why they were created. Okay? So when you know angels, when you know their function, when you know angels, you will know what they can do and what they cannot do. When you know their functionality, you will begin to understand what they can do, their assignment, and how they operate. From, from today, I will rest assure you. I will rest assure you. You will see change. You will see manifestation. This I will guarantee. I will put my name on the line. If I have a name. <laughs> After this one, oh, you will see. You will see manifestation. All right? So now let's look at John chapter 1. John chapter number 1. Glory to God. John chapter number 1 verse 1 to 3. Hey, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So in the beginning was the word. So the word was in the beginning. And the word is God. Watch this. Watch this. He was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning. Who? The word. And the Bible says that same word became flesh. So who was in the beginning with God? Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. Verse number three. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made through him and nothing that was made was made, but it was for him. Mm. Okay. So this is the pretext. Look at the pretext. Of the exist, existing God. He was in the beginning with God. So verse 1 is the pretext. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Key verse. All things were made by him. Including angels. All things. All things. All things were made by him. Through him and without him was not anything that was made that was made. This then now includes angels. All things were made by him that includes angels. So Genesis 1 
and two is the foundation of all creation after that god never created anything else genesis 1 and genesis chapter 2 it was when everything was created and after that god never created ever again are you still here with me so when you when you begin to understand this right that genesis 1 and 2 is the foundation of all creation after that god never created anything else only the new creation the only thing that god then created after the creation after genesis 1 and 2 was the new creation you and i the new creation <laughs> the new what the new creation the born again man that was the only time when god recreated re after genesis 1 and 2 the new man the born again man now look at colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 15 colossians 1 verse number 15 colossians 1 verse number 15 he is the he is the image of the invisible god who is the image remember let us create man in our image in our likeness that man was not adam but it was jesus look at colossians he says he is who is now he's speaking of jesus he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. When he's talking about all things, again, is, is, we include the angels. All things, including angels, were created by him for him. Even principalities, and angels so genesis makes us understand that all things including angels were created in genesis remember remember this oh god watch this i want to shock you i, I want to um, i want to shock you for two minutes if you allow me <laughs> i want to shock you for two minutes even the devil was created he was an angel Oh, did you know that? Yes, I know you knew that. That the devil was an angel. And then obviously we've called him the fallen angel. But I want you to understand something. Then the Bible tells me that nobody had seen God, even angels. So where did people come up with, then God was fighting with the devil. Yet he's an angel. Yet the Bible says nobody had seen God at any time. No, even angels. <laughs> Think about it, yeah? Just sit down and, you know, have a coffee, tea, whatever. Or green tea and sit down and actually meditate on that and actually think if nobody had seen god even angels how is it that they are saying that then the devil was fighting was fighting god and then he, he, he then god then sent abro god michael angel and what what and there was a fight in heaven where was the fight in heaven god fighting an angel Yet the Bible says nobody had seen God at any time. The only time that they saw God is was when the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Upon his birth, the incarnation. That is the first, first time that even angels saw God. Nobody had seen God. Even Moses, Abraham, Elijah, nobody, none of them had seen God. So I just thought I would just throw that in so that, <laughs> so that you... Whoo, <laughs> So, even the devil, an angel, Satan, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, was an angel. They were all created by what? By God. So, when you begin to understand this, you begin to understand, okay. So, these angels were created in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. That's when they were created. That includes angels created in Genesis. Remember, Satan is an angel again, right? So, no one looks. Let's now look at, let's now look at why. Let's look at why God created angels. Let's look at why God created angels. Okay? So that we'll take it from there. Okay? Let's look at why God created angels. Are you ready? I was laying a foundation. Now we are taking off. Okay? 
Hebrews chapter number 1 verse number 6. Okay. Now you have to understand why God created angels. So you have to understand why. The why now. I'm telling you the why. Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 6. Hebrews 1 verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 1 verse number 6. This is the why. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of all the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. So we are beginning to see the reason. So again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, Jesus Christ, the firstborn, from the dead. Okay? Into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. Please, watch this. The word worship, the word minister, there being emphasized in that context, it means a servant. Verse number seven. So that word minister, that word worship, it means servant. Okay? It means servant. 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 Stay with me. Verse number seven. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels wins and his ministers a flame of fire. Worship means serve. Ministers, they are servants. So he makes his angels ministers. The word minister is the same as servant. Okay? Because we want to understand why angels were created. The word minister means servant. So angels were created servants. Hello. Wait. Wait. Angels were created servants. We are not to worship angels. I always hear people giving testimonies that an angel appeared and they bowed their knees in worship. We are not meant to worship angels. We are not meant to worship angels. Angels are ministers, meaning they are servants. That's why when the angels began to kneel down and then the disciple says, no, 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 don't kneel on for us. We are servants just like you. Angels are servants unto us. And we are servants, priests unto God. Oh, God help me to help your people. Angels are ministers unto us. And we are priests unto God. So angels minister, they minister to us. And we minister unto God. Okay? So angels were created servants. We are not to worship angels. So the purpose of angels is to serve us. Hebrews chapter 1. Stay in Hebrews. Okay? Still laying the foundation. Okay? Verse number 13 of the same book. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13. Hebrews 1. Verse number 13. And to which of the angels has he ever said? To which of the angels has he ever said? Sit at the right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. That word right hand, it just means authority. So he's saying which of the angels, among all the angels, among all the angels, which of the angels have I said, sit at my right hand? Meaning, angels are servants. Which of these angels have I given authority? Which of these angels have I said, sit at my right hand? None. Look at verse 14. Oh, God, help me. Look at verse 14. It says, and they are not, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake kabatosha kabataya mahandia they are meant to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation they are meant to serve those that will be born again you and i that are 
the inheritors of salvation, those that will inherit salvation, are they not ministering angels? Are they not ministering servants to save those that will inherit salvation? Are they not all, all, key word that I want you to, to highlight, if the Bible is yours, underline that word that says all, all means all. That means, it means even the, the cherubims, the seraphims, the archangel, the Raphael, the Gabriel, all angels are ministering angels. All angels included. From the cherubims, seraphims, archangel, Raphael, Gabriel, whatever, they are all included. Are they not all ministering angels? So they are ministering spirits. Angels are ministering spirits to minister to those who are to inherit salvation. So God created angels, Kabatosha. God created angels with you in mind. Because he says they, are, they were created for those that will inherit salvation. So God, when he created angels, he did not create them for anything else, but he created them for you, for those that will inherit salvation. Why? For, the, for them to minister. They are your servants. I'm laying the foundation. We are taking off in two minutes. Stay with me, please. Don't go anywhere. Don't just go anywhere. So angels were created. All angels all angels were created to minister to those that will inherit salvation. So God created angels with you and I in mind to minister for us, not to us, but to minister for us, not to. For us, not to us, but for us, for us that will inherit salvation. Okay? So the role of angels is to, to run your errands, to carry out your wishes. Angels are there to carry out your wishes, your errands. You send them, they go. That is their role. If you did not know this, the role, you have angels that have been assigned to you. And your angels, they are, they, are, they are sitting there like this. Waiting for you to send them. Because remember, they are created to say, to minister for us. For those that will inherit salvation. So your angels, they are there sitting, looking at you. Busy crying and whatever, complaining. They are just waiting. Say, ah, this guy, hey, we are meant to save him. So, their role is to save. Remember the Bible declares in the book of 1 Timothy. Look at 1 Timothy. Angels never saw God, like I said. They never saw God. When I say all angels never saw God, including Satan. Hello. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 1 <clears throat> Timothy chapter 3, 6. 6. 1 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. That was the first time that angels saw him upon incarnation. Are you still here? So upon incarnation, angels were then, were then saw God. They had never seen God. So the, that was the first time that angels saw God. So angels are there to save you. And if you don't do accordingly, you will judge. If they, do, if they don't do accordingly, you will judge them. But how can you judge angels if you don't even know what their assignment is? Look at 1 Corinthians. 
1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse number 6. 1 Corinthians 1 6. 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 3. 1 Corinthians 6 3. Do you not know? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? We are to judge angels. So that means if you send an angel on an errand, if that angel does not take your assignment, a time will come that you will judge angels. But then, question, how can you judge them, angels, if you don't understand their role in your life? Now, let's get into it now. I'm about, like, we're taking off now, okay? Like I had said, foundation, foundation class is over. Daniel, let's go to the Bible in the book of Daniel now. Oh, we are, we are taking over. Now we understand the role. We understand why they were created. Now let's go. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 10 verse 11. Ah, Daniel 10 12, sorry. Daniel 10 12. Daniel 10 12. Daniel 10, 12. Basa diga barodia. Now allow me to preach. Now get, I want to preach this now. Let me preach. Let me undo this button. Let me now preach this thing. Right. Daniel chapter number 10 verse number 12. Then said to me, Fear not Daniel. Fear not, Daniel, from the first day that you set your mind, your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God, your words have come bef we if your, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. This is an angel now speaking. He is saying, Daniel, I don't know, maybe let me let me remove Daniel. Let me say, a prophetess angel, the very first day that you set your mind, your heart to pray, your words have come unto me. Your words have come unto me, and I have come because of your words. So that means the angels are, are there waiting on your command. The angel is saying, I have come because of your words. I'm not coming because of your, your, I'm not coming because you're a good person. I'm not coming because you're a prophetess. I'm not coming because you're married to Apostle Roderick, but I am coming because of your words. Nothing else has made me shift. I was set where I was, but I have come not because of anything else, but I have come because of your words. So because I have come, I am a servant because we were created to save you, those that will inherit salvation. So I have come because of the words that you have spoken, because we are activated by your words. Okay, let, 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 me, let, let, me, let, let, let me let me relax two minutes. We have come because of your words. We have come because of so through prayer. Power is unleashed that activates your angel through prayer because it is the, the speaking that activates power that is in you that then activates your angel. So your angel right now is set next to you. Not knowing what to do, where to go because an angel is a servant. It is waiting on you. Jesus said, out of all these whom have you ever heard me give them authority? No, but you, you are seated in Christ Jesus. That means you are set at the right end. You have been given authority. So your authority, Kabato Shalamahandia, your authority has the ability to command your servants. Wait, relax. I've not started. This is just introduction to we are about to take off. Watch this now. Oh, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. Ha, Daniel, we have come for your words. We did not come for anything else, but we have come for your words. What you have said is what we have come. Many of you, the day that you will start speaking, and I believe you will start speaking after this broadcast. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Because we say that prayer then, prayer then activates power that unleashes your angel. Now we want to understand this power. We want to understand this dunamis. Look at the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 10. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. The strength of whose might? Not your power, but his might. His power. Be still. Stand fast. 
The strength of his might is power. So now how do you get this strength? It's a question that somebody is asking. But how do I get this strength? Not a problem. Stay with me. Stay in the book of Ephesians. How do you get this strength? How do you get this strength? We want to understand it. Ephesians chapter number 3. Oh God help me. Ephesians chapter number 3 verse verse 15. Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 15. How do we get this strength? Because I have to teach you these things. You have to understand. So that when you understand what I'm teaching you, your life, oh, it will be just like... Ephesians chapter Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 15 from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so who has you have already been strengthened in your inner being you are a carrier of dunamis exosia you are a carrier of his power you are a carrier of his power from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power, dunamis, through his spirit in your inner being. So where is this power? It is in your inner being. Where is this power? It is in your inner being. Stay with me in Ephesians. Let me lay this and then we, 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 we take off. Where is this power? Where is this power? This power is inside of you. Why are you going over Sagisha Lama Hantalaba? Why are you going all over the place looking for power? Somebody said, Come, I'll give you power. So a seed. Listen, the power is inside of you. The power, you carry power. You can, I'm speaking to you, the ones that angels were created for, the ones that will inherit the salvation. You are the carriers of power. You have been strengthened with power in your inside. You have power. You are moving around with power. It's like somebody, is, his car is parked there and they say, hey, what do I do? My car, yeah, this. Yet they have the key, the car key in their pocket. Unless you take that car key, put it in the car, start the car and the car will start. You have the power. Watch this. Stay with me. Stay with me. Ephesians chapter 1. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. Oh, Gabaski Adohosha. I want to deal with this power thing. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power? Towards us who believe. So this power is to who? To you, the ones that will inherit salvation. To you, the ones that believe. According to the dunamis of his great exosia, of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the... So upon his resurrection, you were empowered. Upon his resurrection, you were empowered. So power came upon his resurrection. Don't be going out in some Okoro village looking for power, drinking some Okoro things, wanting power. Oh, drink this oil. You'll have power. Drink this, eat this. Forget that thing. Upon his resurrection, you received power. Yeah. But you have not been utilizing that power because you don't know. That's why the Bible says, my people, they perish because they lack knowledge. Don't be fooled by people saying, I'll give you power. Power from where? Power from where? You have received power upon his resurrection. Watch this. That you wept in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly place, far above all power, all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Okay. Stay in Ephesians. Go back to Ephesians chapter 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Oh, go deep, Baradia. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. Go, Baraskia. Watch this. Now to him, now to him, who is able to do more abundantly than all that you can ever ask or think of. Now to him, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever imagine of. Okay, wait. According to the power that is working within us, so where is the power? The power is in you. Oh God help me. The power is in you. The power is in you. According to the power that worketh in us. Working within us. To him be the glory. In the church and in Christ Jesus. Throughout all generations. Forever and ever. Amen. So the power of God is. Is the power that is at work in you. 
Oh, The power of God is the power that is at work inside of you. Oh, so that power is unleashed by the vehicle of prayer. Maso Dabahadia. That power is unleashed by the vehicle of prayer. So the vehicle of prayer then activates your angel. Daniel, we have heard, we have come for your words because your words have, your words have come unto us. So now we are coming because of your words. Your prayer has been heard. Your words, your words, words, they are, a, they are a vehicle that activates and unleashes your angel. So your words, your prayer activates your angels. Daniel, we have come because of your words. We, we did not come because you're a good guy. So many of you, your angels have not come. Not because you are not a good person, not because you are not born again, not because you are not the one that was to inherit salvation, but they have not come to you because you've been silent. You have been silent. But I'm reminded of a man. I am reminded of a man by the name of Blind Bat Amias. Gosha Batalama. Let me speak to somebody right now. Because the angels can only come when words have been spoken. Angels can only come when prayer has been made and it unleashes your angel. But there's a man by the name of Blind Bat Amias. When the Bible says, as Jesus was passing by him, blind is blind, but Amias is blind. But. He, he, he could speak uh, I, I, meaning that I, I cannot see it like I cannot see it now but I, I, I can speak as, as Jesus was passing by he began to shout he said Jesus son of David have mercy on me and then it was the same disciples that were around Jesus that began to silence blind Bartimaeus, saying you are making too much noise but the moment that they kept, they kept on shouting the moment that they kept on saying you are making noise blind but as the bible says he shouted the more why because he had maybe got revelation that it is in my speaking that activates the power that unleashes the angel that will stop jesus blind but I might be blind, but I can speak. I have a voice. My voice shall activate. Because the angels, they came for the words of Daniel. Because Daniel thought of prayer. And angels came because of the words. Because angels are created to serve. They are servants. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus begins to shout the more. He begins to speak the more. He begins, to, I don't know who I'm speaking to, but you need to begin to speak the more. You need to begin to speak the more. Blind Bartimaeus began to speak. The same people that silenced him, the disciples, Jesus stopped and said, He sent the same disciples that called blind Bartimaeus. I know these disciples, at least they were okay. But they went, I bet they went and said, ah, no, don't worry. I'll connect you to Jesus. <laughs> hey. Hey, the disciples said, I'll connect you. No, let's go. Okay, we'll take you. We'll take you. We heard you. No, you did not hear me. It is not you, blind. Hey, it was not you. It was Jesus. He heard my voice. It was the angels that heard my voice. And they have come because of my words. Daniel, we have come because of your words. Many of you, you are too quiet. Many of you, you have been silenced by sickness. You have been silenced by lack. You have been silenced by infirmity. You have been silenced by diseases. But I'm here to announce to you, the more that disease comes, the more that sickness comes, I want you to shout the more. Blind Bartimaeus said, ah, I might not see my healing now. But I'm going to shout the more. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. I will shout the more. Until there is a manifestation. But many people have been silenced. By your condition. You have been silenced by your situation. But blind Batamir said I will shout the more. So that's why we have come to. To that uh, concept of saying. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Why? Because Christ, a Christian that is powerless is not praying. Because it is through power, it is through prayer that power is activated. So a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. 
because he's not making power available. He fails to make power available. So a man with authority gives instructions. A man with authority gives instructions. You have authority. You have been given authority. All power has been given unto you. That means you are a man or a woman in authority. That means you will command angels. Okay. Okay. Look at Ephesians. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, more abundantly than all that we can ask or think, according to the power at work within us. So where is this power? This power is in you. Meaning power will not work until you pray. God help me to help your people. Power will not work until you pray. Power will not work until you pray. The power you have it already. The car will not start until you start it. <laughs> power will not work until you pray. Because the power it is already in you. It worketh in you. And to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever imagine or hope or think of. According to the dunamis. That is inside of you. So that power is inside of you. So that power is activated when you pray. That power is activated when you pray. I don't know who I'm speaking to. But that power is already inside of you. Don't go out there looking for power. There is no power out there. That power is inside of you. That power was given unto you upon his resurrection. So a man in authority. A man in authority knows how to command. Oh God help me. A man in authority. Watch this. Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew chapter number 8 verse 15. <clears throat> Matthew 8 15. Matthew 8 15. Go Baroskia. Matthew 8. Are you there? Are you ki bahatia? Matthew 8 15. Mm. <clears throat> Paragazizi mm. Matthew 8 verse 15. No, verse, no. Matthew 8, 5. Let's go to Matthew 8, 5. Matthew 8, 5. Matthew 8, 5. Jesus, this is Jesus. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word, and my servant shall be healed. Far too, for I too am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Pay attention. The centurion is saying, I'm a man under authority. I understand authority. Oh, I don't know, I'm about to say something here. I'm a man that is under authority and I know authority. I say to one, go, he goes. I say to one, comes, he comes. And the Bible says, you have been given authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. You are, a, you are in authority. And angels are servants. The centurion tells his servant, go. He goes, tells his servants, come, they come. They understand because of authority. But they don't just come and go until he says go and until he says come. So then he says to Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. Speak the word. Why? Because it is in the speaking of the word. Angels will come. God help me. Daniel, we have heard your prayer. We have come for your words, words, words. So the centurion is saying, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. You speak the word because in the words that you are speaking, you are activating angels that will go and minister to my servant. Because I am a man under authority. I understand authority. And I'm speaking to somebody that has been given authority. I'm speaking to somebody that has got power that is inside of him. That all you need to do is to speak the word. When you speak the word, Power is generated and your angels is released. So he spoke the word and angels, Kabadosha Tayamandia, angels carried the assignment. The angels, they carried the assignment. He spoke the word 
angels carry the assignment. Why? Because angels are created to serve those that will inherit salvation. They are created to serve you. So when you speak, angels respond to your words. Angels don't respond to your feelings. Angels don't respond to emotions. Angels respond to your words. So when the centurion said, you speak the word, because it is the assignment of the angels to carry that assignment to my servant. Right now I declare and I decree, by the authority of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the risen Lord, Whatever situation that you are facing right now, whatever mountain, whatever obstacle that you are facing right now, I don't need to come to where you are. Right now by his authority, I declare and I decree, whatever mountain of sickness, of lack, whatever obstacle that has been before you, I command it by the name of Jesus Christ, let it be destroyed, let it be broken, let every yoke be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak the word and the angels who carry that assignment in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know that I am a possessor, a career of dunamis. I am a career of power. I am a man in authority. I am seated in the heavenlies, far above principalities. I am set in Christ. I am in authority. By that authority, I declare healing over you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare financial breakthrough. If it is what you are trusting God for, every door that was closed, I, command, I open it. I command that door open. As I speak that, angels are at your assignment. They are going to open those doors for you. That is the role of the angels. That is why they were created. All angels, including Gabriel, the Cherubims, the Seraphims, the Raphaels, all the angels were created to save those that will inherit salvation. So right now, you have power. But you have not been told this. You have been told, no, with me, then you get power. This is why many, of, many believers are weak. Because they have not been taught the truth. The truth of the matter is this. You are a career of God's power. You don't have to be going somewhere looking for power. Sow a seed for power. There's no such thing like that. Power was given unto you upon resurrection. If Christ rose from the dead, and he rose for you, that means power is, is yours. It is inside of you. According to the power that worketh in us. So the centurion said, you just speak the word. Why? Because angels are created to carry that assignment. Angels are created to, to, for our errands. So Jesus spoke the word. And it was the angels that carried that assignment. How I remember Daniel. I have come for your words. 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 You are in authority. I am speaking to somebody that is in authority. The power that you are saying, oh God, I need power. That power is already inside of you. It was given unto you upon his resurrection. You are in authority. You are in authority. You are in authority. I will say it again. You are in authority. You are a career of God's dunamis. You are a career of God's exosia. So when you are a man or a woman in authority, a man in authority gives instructions to servants. So you give instructions to servants. And who is your servant? Angels are your servants. We don't worship angels. Angels are created. Angels are created to serve us. Not to worship them. We don't worship angels. They serve us. They do our errands. They run around for us. Angels will listen. I said angels will listen. Angels will listen to you. It doesn't matter that you don't have a title. You don't need a title for, you to, for angels to listen to you. The fact that angels were created for those that will inherit salvation. And you are a partaker of it. You are a partaker of it. You don't need a title for angels to hear you. You don't need some funny stuff for you to... Angels, they hear you. But they only hear you when you speak. They only hear when you speak. If you're quiet, they don't hear. If you're quiet, they don't hear. They only hear when you speak. Blind Batamias, he began to shout the more. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me, son of David. 
They wanted to silence him. The enemy will try to silence you. The enemy will try to make you not to pray. Oh, God help me. Let me say this. With, with, all, with all due respect, I have to say it as the Spirit leads. I have to say this. The enemy will try to silence you from praying. And he will tell you that, oh, don't, don't worry, you don't need to pray. You've got the anointing from Papa. I have no, I have no issue with Papa's anointing or whatever. But I have to say this because as the Spirit leads me. Because this is what we are seeing in the body of Christ. Many of you here, the enemy, you, you have become in a situation where the disciples were silencing blind Bartimaeus. Many of you, you have, you have uh, substituted prayer with oils. You have substituted prayer with mantles. You have substituted prayer with swords. You have substituted prayer with all manner of 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 um of symbols i have to say this yet angels they are not emotional they don't come for your feelings they come for your words but the enemy now is silencing you from a place of prayer you're no longer praying you're saying oh no don't worry god knows in what's in my heart god knows my desires god you're no longer praying because the enemy is silencing you may may you not be silenced ever again many of you you have stopped prayer because you have oil. You just say, I've got the oil for Papa. It covers me. You don't need to pray. Yet angels, they come for your words. And the enemy does not want you to pray. The enemy wants you to be silenced. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian because it is prayer that unleashes power that then unleashes your angel. So they will not allow you to pray. Say, don't worry, I'm praying for you, and you, you don't pray. Yet angels, they come for your words. So authority, a man in authority, he gives instructions to the servants. I hope you're hearing this. Go back on your knees. Begin to command, begin to speak words, because angels, they come for your words. Angels, they listen to you. Look at James chapter 5. James chapter 5, <clears throat> praise God. I had to say that. James chapter number 5, verse 17. James 5, 17. James 5, 17. The Bible says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it may not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Oh, Please understand this. Elijah was a man with a nature like us. And the Bible says he prayed fervently and it did not rain for three years and six months. But here's the question I want to ask. Elijah was not born again. But he commanded rain not to rain. He locked the heavens for it not to rain. Yet he was not born again. How much more of you that are born again? Yet he was not born again. And how much more of you, with even the power, the dunamis of God inside of you. Ah, in the name of Jesus, I declare in the name of Jesus, from today, you will shake nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, your name shall open doors for you. I declare it so in Jesus' mighty name. Angels do not have power on their own. Look at Psalms. Look at Psalms. Oh God, look at Psalms. Look at Psalms 103. Look at Psalms 10320. Look at Psalms 10320. Psalms 10320. Psalms 10320. Bless the Lord, all his angels, you mighty ones who do his word. Who do what? His word. Obeying the voice of what? Of his word. So angels, they obey the voice of the word. So if angels obey the voice of the word and they come for the words and you, they are not coming because you are not praying. There are no words that you are releasing because angels, they obey the voice of the word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts and his ministers 
who do his will. Jaki Patala. Meaning, when you give voice to the word, which is prayer, like Abosha, you unleash power that activates your angels to be part of your prayer answer. When you speak, when you pray, you unleash power that activates your angel that becomes part of your prayer answer. Now, I want you to pay attention. I want you to pay attention to this. Pay attention. Not all angels have wings. Not all angels have wings. There are some angels that are, that are without wings. Depending on the power you make available, it determines the angel that is being released. Now, let me close with Hebrews. Let me close with Hebrews. Let me close with Hebrews. Oh, God help me. Depending on the power that you make available. That's why the Bible says, for some of you, you have entertained angels unaware. So if not all angels have got wings. The angel that appeared before, before Abraham, they did not have wings. Because he even went as far as saying, please come in, let me cook for you. If they had wings, why would he say, let me cook for you? They appeared with no wings. The angel that appeared before Mary had no wings. Because if he had wings, Mary would, not, would have been frightened. But she was calm. She was like, hey, what manner of salutation is this? So not all angels have got wings. For many of you, you have entertained angels unaware. Many of you, you have chased your own angels because of your character. You pray, oh, destiny help us, destiny help us. Angels have been deployed as destiny helpers, but because of your attitude and character, you have chased them away. For some have entertained angels unaware. Look at Hebrews 13. Let me close with Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. <clears throat> Zoom pratala hadia zujala mahanta yabasia. Verse number 2. Hebrews 13, verse number 2. Watch this. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality. Are you? Please listen to this. Okay? Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For thereby, some have entertained angels unawares. That means there are angels that don't have wings. But here, he's saying, let brotherly love continue. Love everybody. Love everybody. Because for some of you, you have entertained angels unaware. You have entertained angels unaware. Watch this. So when you don't pray, your angels are dormant. There is no movement. When you don't pray, your angels are dormant. There is no movement. When you don't pray, angels are dormant. There is no movement. Why? Because the enemy wants to silence you not to pray. People don't like praying anymore. People don't like praying anymore. Say, ah, no, I don't need to pray. I'll just sow a seed. Ah, I don't need to pray. I'll just take the oil. Ah, I don't need to pray. I'll just... That's the enemy. The same way that they tried to silence blind Bartimaeus. But he kept shouting. He kept speaking. He kept speaking. He kept speaking. So, okay, watch this. Man Taliga Bahazia. Angels are servants. Okay? Angels are servants. They are there to save you. Let me bring it home. Let me help somebody right now and bring it closer to home. You go to a restaurant. You go into a restaurant, right? You go into a restaurant. You are set there. The menu is right there. Your prayer points. Uh, you'll get it in two minutes. But the, the waiter will not come, will not save you what you have not said you want. Remember, 
Angels are servants. As much as a waiter, a servant. A waiter is a servant ready to serve you. Until you tell the waiter what you want to eat, he will not bring it to you. Not because that the food is not there in the restaurant, but the food is there in the restaurant, but you have been too quiet. You are quiet. He said, make your request be known unto me. Hala basuja. So servants, they come for your words, just as a, a waiter will come for your words. Now watch this. Here is a situation that I am seeing within the body of Christ. What many people are struggling with. There are people that are in a restaurant. Oh God help me. There are people that are in a restaurant. And while you are in the restaurant, you are looking at your neighbor. You are seeing your neighbor is having a starter. You are seeing your neighbor is having um, whatever dish that they are having. And you, you are sat there and you are busy complaining and saying, God, what about me? Look at my neighbor. My neighbor is having a starter. He's having, a, he's having his main course. But you are there. And God is saying, ah, what is your problem? Have you told the waiter what you want? Have you mentioned what you want? Because the waiter is ready to come to your service. Because the waiter is doing your errands. The angels are created for our errands. The angels are created to serve us. But angels will only go upon our words when we pray. Power is activated with unleashes angels. So you are in a restaurant and you are busy looking at other people. Said, hey, hey, sister so-and-so got married. Sister so-and-so just bought a house. Sister so-and-so just did this. Hey, brother, this just started a company. Hey, brother, this. And then you are wailing and crying and wailing and crying. And then God is saying, you are in a restaurant. Have you told the waiter what you want? You have not spoken. So many people, right now, things are not moving. Not because God does not love you. Because everything pertaining to life and godliness, God has already given us. Things are not moving because you are not speaking. Daniel, we have come for your words. Daniel, we did not come because you were looking sad in a restaurant while others are eating. You got to speak. You got to tell the waiter. You got to be there and say, Oh, Masatala Mahandi, what do I need? Oh, I need a starter. I need soup. I need, uh, I need garlic bread. I need this for a starter. And I need, uh, what, is, what do you want for your main course? You got to speak in main course. I want jack chicken. I want uh, beans with rice. I, I want this. I want this. Uh, do you want dessert? Yes, I want dessert. I want this. I want that. You got to speak. But guess what? I have news for you. I have news for you. In the restaurant, you will have to pay. But with Jesus, everything has been paid for. Manto Baroskia Dohosha. Everything has been paid for. Your healing has been paid for. Your, your, your financial status has been paid for. Your health has been paid for. By his stripes, you are healed. He took away our iniquities. He has done it all. Everything has been paid. He paid it with his life. Through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He has paid for it. All you need to do is just make the order. Begin to make your order. You are busy looking at others. Say, ah, but this one is having, but this one is having a, a velvet cake. Oh, but uh, what about me? Make the order. Jesus has already paid for it. There is nothing else that you have to pay for. You will not pay for salvation. You will not pay for grace. You will not pay for peace. You will not pay for anointing. You don't pay for that. Jesus paid for it. Upon his resurrection. Upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection. He has paid for it. We are no longer seeing the power of God in believers. Why? Because believers have opted not to pray. Because they are opting for mantles. They are opting for mantles. Jesus has paid for it. You are in his restaurant. He has paid for it. You are in his... He has paid for it. Watch this. Oh God, help me. Let, let, me, let, me, let, let me quickly say this. Let me quickly say this, and then we close. Hebrews, oh go baraskia de heja la mahanta la basia. Mentro hoskia. Hebrews 13, verse number 2. Do not neglect to show hospitality, because for some of you, you have entertained angels. Manto higa barodia. Jesus has paid for it. Oh God, he baradia suja. So when you don't pray, angels are, are dormant. So what you want to do, Baroskia Dohoja, this is what I want you to do. Every time when you begin to pray, I want you to begin to visualize your angels going. 
That activates your faith. That's what the Bible says in Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6. Let the sharing of your faith become effectual, effective by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So when you begin to pray from today, I want you to begin to visualize because you now know the assignment of angels. Because before you did not know the role of angels. You did not know why they were created. But now that you know that they were created for you, now that you know when you begin to pray, I want you to begin to visualize your angels going and bringing that which is rightfully yours begin to visualize it when you're praying don't just pray no when you begin to pray visualize begin to see them father in the name of jesus i thank you for that building lord i begin to see angels going going to negotiate for that building i begin to see them because they are there for our errands they are there for our errands. So the restaurant that you are in, Jesus has paid already everything. This is why Jesus said, don't you know that I could command? I could speak. I could ask my father. He would deploy a legion of angels. But the deployment of legion of angels will not just come, but it will come because of your words. I will speak. I will say, and the angels will come. I will say, and the angels will come. I will say, and the angels will come. So the restaurant that you are in, oh God, I don't know why God is shifting me back to this restaurant. In the restaurant, Jesus has paid everything for you. Whether it is starter that you want, he's paid for it. Whether it is main course that it is, it is paid for it. Whether it is, a, a, what do you call it, that bag where you, doggy bag, where leftovers, they have been paid for. It's like a buffet. Everything paid for. Watch this. Okay, let, let me. Mm. Revelations. I'll, I'll close with revelations. Okay? I'll close with revelations. Revelations chapter 320. I will close with Revelations 320. I will pray. Meaning, angels are activated when you pray. I will pray. So our words, they discharge power and direction. Our words discharge power and direction. So what do you need to do, my beloved? You need to pray. Because when you pray, power is activated. That unleashes your angel. Because angels are there to save you. We are not there to worship angels. Let me close with Revelations and then we pray. Revelations chapter number because God is, is shifting me back to this restaurant. Man de Oh God help me. Revelations chapter 3, verse number 20. Revelations 3, verse number 20. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, watch this. I will come in to I will come in to him and I will eat with him. Other versions will say, I will dine with him. I will come into him and I will eat with him and ye with me. So he says, behold, I stand at the, door, no, at the door knocking. Whoever that shall open the door, I will come and I will dine with him. But I want you to understand something. When you are dining with Jehovah, when you are dining with Jesus, everything, you will take care of it. You will take care of the bill. Everything is paid for. But I want you to understand this. Let, let me... Let me share this with you and then I close. I, after this, I'll close, 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 okay? I'll close, close, close. I want you to understand this. <clears throat> he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and whosoever shall open the door, allow me to enter. I will dine with them, I will eat with them. That means when you're eating with Jesus, you will never lack. I declare you will never lack in the mighty name of Jesus. When you're eating with Jesus, you will never lack. You will never lack. So understand this. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, is it uh, sister divine. Bless you for that. Say, did God, did not God speak all things into existence? Yes, we speak. You see now. Thank you for that. So now watch this. He says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Whoever shall allow me to enter, I will dine with them. I will eat with them. Now, I pay attention. Please pay attention to this. I don't want you to miss this for anything else. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. In the olden days, when they will have a buffet or when they will be dining, 
what they would do, somebody would go and get his own food. And he'll come and he'll sit at the table. And somebody else will go get his food. And this is the old, in the olden days, this is what they used to do. I will go, I save myself. And then I come back and sit. I think they did this because of there were certain people that were greedy and all that. Watch this. Play, pay attention. So they would go and take food and then come back, sit at the table. As they were set at the table, before they even began to eat, they would swap plates. Why? Because others were to avoid poisoning. So they swap plates. So I go, I get my stuff. If I fill my plate with so much, I come back, I sit down. Somebody else will bring their plate. Maybe they did not put much, but we were going to switch plates to avoid uh, poisoning each other. And obviously, I think it was for those that were, you know, that were greedy, that will fill their plate to the brim. They would switch the plates. Okay? Did you get that? Now, listen to this. Now Jesus is saying, Kobata, remember, in the old, they would switch plates. List the plate that I'm having has been poisoned. So if you had poisoned me, it is you that will have the poison. So you would make sure you're not poisoned because the place will be switched. Now Jesus in the book of Revelation is saying, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whosoever shall open the door, I shall come and I shall dine with him. So when Jesus enters and he dines with you, he eats with you, there is going to be a switch. Alagabasia. There is going to be a switch. What am I saying, Mando Bosha? There is going to be a switch. So when, when you take your plate, Jesus comes in with his plate. When Jesus comes in with his plate, and you, you take your plate, there is going to be a switch of plates. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but there is a switch that is about to happen right now. There is a switch that is about to happen right now. Your plate of mourning, Kobo Shatayamandia. Jesus is about to switch it with dancing. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but your place of sackcloth, Jesus is about to clothe you and switch your plate with joy. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but your plate of rejection, Alebo Shatayamandia. Jesus is about to switch it for acceptance. Your plate of sickness, Mashutalamandia. Jesus is about to switch it. For healing, I'm here to declare and to decree. Whatever plate that you were carrying, whether it was a plate of death, Jesus is switching it for life. Zoe, the God kind of life. Whatever it is, because Jesus, he paid for it. So there is a switch that is happening. Sickness is being switched. The plate of sickness is being switched for healing. May you receive your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree. As you begin to speak, your angels will be activated. They will go for your assignment. They will go and meet you at your point of need. And they will bring that answer that you have been trusting for. Because it is in the speaking. It is in him speaking. The Bible says, through his words, he formed the heavens and the earth. It was through the words. The centurion, he said, you don't have to come to my house, but just speak the word. It is the speaking. It is the speaking. Just speak the word. And my servant shall be made whole. It is in him speaking. Prayer activates power that is already inside of you. That unleashes your angel. Because angels are created to save us. Angels are created to minister for us. So if you don't pray, your angels are dormant. They are sitting with you. Yet the Bible says we have been encompassed with a numerable number of angels. Why are you not deploying your angels? Why are you being quiet? In the beginning, God created the heavens. He said, let there be light. Watch this. When he said, let there be light, light appeared. And the same God that said, let there be light, and there was light. Let there be this, there was that. The same God that said that resides in you. The same God that said that upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection gave birth to you. He is our prototype. As he is, so are we. Why are you not speaking? The church has gone to a place whereby the enemy, the devil, has silenced the church from prayer. It is no longer prayer that is being seen in the church. But it is too many gimmicks and too many... Uh, symbols that are being used instead of prayer you don't want to pray but it is in you praying that power is activated 
that is already inside of you that unleashes your angel your angel is there to save you are they not all ministering angels to save those that will inherit salvation so angels are there to save you so from tonight from today whatever time it may be when you begin to pray i want you to begin to visualize your angels going on assignment i want you to visualize it i want you to see it if you can see it you can have it if you can see it you can have it for we do not walk by sight we walk by faith not by sight if you can see it you can have it so jesus paid for it all you don't have to pay your angel your angel is is his assignment that is the reason why angels were created nothing else angels were created for you and i jesus had you and i in mind god rather had you and i in mind when he created the the angels they were to save us those that will inherit salvation so my beloved just like daniel he said daniel from the very first day you set your mind to pray we have come for your words we have come for your words so if you want angels to come they will not come because of you being a nice guy or nice lady they will come because of your words so begin to speak begin to speak meaning begin to pray let prayer be part of you listen don't complicate prayer let me help somebody in regards to prayer don't complicate prayer don't be religious about when it comes to prayer you can pray anyway while you are driving, you can be praying, Masha, Paraha, Sigia, Doho, Tandele, Bosh. While you are taking your shower, your bath, you can be praying. Women, while you are cooking, you can be praying. While you are ironing, whatever you can be doing, you can be praying. Don't be religious, whereby you have to look for somewhere and then hide somewhere and say, oh yes, this place I'm, no. Don't be religious. Am I saying don't have moments like that? You can have moments like that reason why you would go to a secret place it is because you want to just cut down the noise and the distractions but you can actually pray anyway because the god that you serve is omnipresent is everywhere so he says behold i stand at the door and knock whoever shall allow me to come in i will dine with them i will eat with them and there will be a switch that's why he says my burden is lighter my yoke is lighter that means there's a switch. He's switching your plate of sorrow. He's switching it for joy. He's switching it for peace. He's switching your plate of rejection for acceptance. He was rejected that we may be accepted. We have been justified. We have been sanctified. He's switching your plate of sin for his righteousness. Look at the Bible. I'll close with Isaiah and then we pray. Isaiah 53. Praise God. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Mala sabatala mahanta yabasia. Isaiah 53 verse 4. Zanke talia bahasi. Isaiah 53 verse 4. Surely he was born. He, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Switch. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, you are healed. I don't care how you're feeling right now. But the Bible says, by his wounds, you are healed. Not you will be, you are. Begin to pray. Manifestation, you will see the manifestation. And I declare and I decree in this, after today, you will see manifestation. You will testify. And I can't wait to hear your testimony. That when you begin to pray, 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 oh, Gabasuja la Mahanta, power that is already inside of you has been activated and has unleashed your angels. But I want to give somebody an opportunity before I go. I want to give somebody an opportunity. That Jesus is saying, behold, I stand at the door and I'm knocking. Maybe he's been knocking on your door. Maybe you've been saying, ah, no, not now. I'll think about it. Maybe you've been delaying. Maybe you've been prolonging. 
He's been knocking on your door. He has been showing you signs. He has been showing you his goodness. And he's saying, all I just want is I want to come in. I want to dine with you. I want to give you life. I want to switch death and give you life. I want to switch your mourning to dancing. I want to switch your sackcloth and I want to give you, clothe you with, with joy. I want to switch your sickness with healing. I want to switch your sin with my righteousness. You don't have to pay anything I've paid for it. Maybe he's been knocking on your door. But you've been contemplating. My beloved, all I can say is, now is the time that you open that door, allow him. It was on the cross when they pierced him, when blood was gushing out, he had you and I in mind. He was thinking of you. When the whip was ripping off his flesh, he was thinking of you. He paid our debts. What we could not pay for ourselves, he became sin. For the Bible says, he did not spare his son, but he gave him up. That word gave him up is he betrayed his son to his last enemy, that is death. He did not spare his son. He gave him up for us all. How much more will he not also graciously give us all things? I don't know who it is that I'm speaking to. But Jesus gave up his life that you may have life. And today he's knocking at the door and he's saying, just allow me to come in. Stop contemplating. Stop prolonging. I just want to pray with you this prayer. And I just want you to just repeat this prayer with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. For Lord, I have heard your word. You indeed have been knocking and knocking. But today, I believe in your word. I believe that you died, you were buried, and you rose on the third day. And today I open the door of my heart. I allow you in my life, Lord. Come into my life. Dine with me. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Today I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and personal Savior. Behold, all things have passed away, O God. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that I am born again from this day forth. As I have opened my heart and I have allowed you in to come and dine with me. Father, I thank you because it was on the cross when blood was gushing out, you were thinking of me. You paid for my debts that I could not pay. You were rejected that I may be accepted. And Father, because of that, I believe in your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And today I open my heart. Come in and dine with me. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I confess with my mouth that from today I am born again. I am a child of God. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Father, I thank you for accepting me as your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. If you have just made that prayer, I want to say welcome to the family. And I will encourage you to find a Bible-believing church where you will, you will grow, you will be taught sound doctrine that you may grow in the things of Christ, that you may come to the knowledge of truth. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, but rightly dividing the word of truth. So what you have just done, don't take it light. You have confessed it with your own mouth. You have believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and you have confessed it. It's, it, it is a very simple prayer, but you have just received life. 
and I welcome you yet again. And to everybody that has been watching, I declare and I decree, may this week be a week of manifestation. May you testify. I can't wait to hear your testimony. As you begin to command, as you begin to pray, to exercise your authority, you have power already that is already inside of you. As you begin to pray, your angels, they will come for your words. Your angels, they will come for your, your words. They will come to your for your errands. Just like a restaurant. That which you are going to eat, you have to speak it. So it's make your request be known unto me. My beloved, have a blessed week filled with manifestations. Filled with glory, filled with so much peace and so much love. But remember, not all angels have wings. There are some that don't have wings. That's why uh, Hebrews was saying, treat everybody well. For some of you, you have entertained angels unaware. So as you go out, doing your, whatever that you do, be conscious about your surroundings. Your angel that you've been praying for might have come, but because of your, your conduct or your attitude towards them, it might be you set, I don't know, maybe on a train, bus, plane, whatever. Somebody just sits next to you and then will just ask you something simple. And you're like, why are you asking me that? Uh -huh. Your angel will have appeared. So be mindful. My beloved, have a glorious week. From me, it is Shalom. God bless you.